Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your mindfulness life coach and soon to be a psychologist. And I would say that because a lot of things are evolving. It's been a while since we actually did uh, freestyle and uh, man, you know, it's funny, a week can go by, a month go by, a year can go by and so many things are constantly evolving and I always think now when things evolve or happen, it happens to benefit myself or benefit things around my environment to get what I want. So happy and welcome back to another freestyle and today's topic is for me is I'm going back to school. Um, I discussed before in our podcast how I always want to go back to school, get a degree and something. Um, I, I always put your back when I was 18, 19, graduating high school, I think at that time. And I always wanted to become a mechanical engineer. And the reason why I wanted to become a mechanical engineer was it allows me to, you know, make a lot of money. I like building things, I like creating things, and I like math, right? Let's say. But you know what? I never pursued that avenue in my life. And looking back, I would not want to be by a, behind a computer eight to 10 hours a day, or if not longer. I just can imagine what my body would look like and where it be, but it's great how in, in this time in my life, I'm able to, and thank God for technology too, I'm able to take online classes to actually get my degree. And what's kind of the other thing that's about that is that it's online classes and I don't have to go to a campus and this is amazing. And not just that, no, when we ever want to accomplish something in our lives, or do something or make a change or, you know, we're frustrated. The main thing we got to look at is not what's happening within us, like our thoughts and, and all and our emotions, which are good emotions, but we got to look at our environment and is the environment right to quit our job? And is the environment right, in my case, go back to school? Is the environment right to take a risk? Now, sometimes you have to take a step back to take a step forward, but what in your environment? So my environment right now allows me to go back to school, get my bachelor's of science and also get a master's degree. So, cause bachelor of science, unfortunately is just a piece of paper. You gotta get that master's to actually mean anything nowadays. So that's where I'm at with that. Weather in Washington has certainly changed. I mean, it's really funny coming from California, which sunrises about 5.30 in the morning, sits around 8, 8.30, 9, 9 PM. Here in Washington, you know, same time zone for the North, sun rises about 4.30 AM means it's, it's starting to be light outside. Sun rises actually at 5 a.m. And sun doesn't go down past 9 o'clock right now. And it's just, it's not even June yet. So by the time July hits, we'll be almost to 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night before the sun goes down and probably close to 4.30 a.m. when it does rise. So you get a lot of daylight out here. So I'm really, really happy what's happening. So what's up with you, Glow? What's new? Well, first of all, congratulations. You know what? That Thank you. It is very and, exciting. And, and I'm excited for you. Well, we need to congratulate people. And we always miss just, hey, congratulations. Instead, we always want to offer opinion about something. So why do you want to go back to school? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Congratulations. And that validates people's, 
I feel good. I feel validated. I feel important. We got to do more of that. We learned that, but we got to do more of that out there in society. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. You're right. I think we were just talking about like our sometimes our automatic responses to certain things, right? And I think I've been practicing a lot of, instead of questioning it, yeah, like right now, the first thing you do is congratulate, right? Because it's it's an exciting thing. Why 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 wouldn't be why wouldn't we congratulate someone who will pursue something that is you know something that they like something that they have been thinking about doing and finally here it is you know and it's I have a friend who is the same way I'm going to talk about the COVID vaccination and she's just like I, no, I'm not going to get it I've never had a flu shot before right never so she was just like no I'm not she's not against it but she's afraid of what can happen to her because she's never had a flu shot. And then so one morning, um, one night she texted me, she goes, I made an appointment. I'm going in tomorrow. I was like, oh, wow. I said, well, congratulations. And, you know, we just kind of joked about it and we laughed about it. I didn't ask her why. There, there, just just do it, right? Just like you going to school. Um, going back to school, you um, did mention that this had something Something that one day you probably, it probably crossed your mind one time. I'd like to go to college or I'd like to get a degree, but you never really pursued it because you know why? You didn't know at that time probably what you really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But to some people, they want to go to school because eh, it's the right thing to do. I, I need to go to college. I'm going to go to college and get a degree. But is this something that you really wanted to do? And some people, it just doesn't come around for them until later on. How it came around for you because now you're just following this energy. I mean, as psychologist, I think it's totally you. You found something that you like. You found your passion. And um, the next step for you that you felt is to go to school for it and get a degree. You know, there's two things there. Something we have to learn. I learned just after taking our soon-to-be a behavior, sorry, not behavior, positive psychology practitioners think called hilotrophic. So the easy way to think about that's long-term, don't Google it right now, is have you ever seen a flower or a plant or a leaf, whatever, they tend to lean towards the sun, right? So we tend to go where energy flows. Have you heard the term, there's always light at the end of the tunnel? Mm -hmm. I hope that term has been around for a very long time. That's called hilotrophic. We tend to go where light is. Most of us now go to college to to do one thing. You go to college to earn an education. Um, and for those that want to make impact, you know, great. Most of us go to college to earn an education, bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD, or whatever it is, so that way we can earn an income. That's really the purpose of going to college, is that way I can get a great job so I can get that career, so I can make enough money, so that way I feel stable. That's really, let's be honest, that's really what it is because most of us that graduate college now graduate with some kind of debt. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. Um, his son is is two hundred fifty grand in debt for college to get his, his law degree. Now you come out of college with a quarter, half a quarter million dollars in debt. Now you got to make sure you have that right job to pay for that debt. Nine times out of ten, a first person out of college doesn't get that great job. The person with experience and a degree usually gets the job because that's what they want. They want that experience. They want to get someone that's ready to go without having to ramp them up. So I'm actually blessed. I, I'm really happy because now I've been going, thinking about going back to college for years. And at this point, my environment, my mindset, what I want to do specifically, so the environment, what I want to do, my mindset, and specifically what I want to do is hilotrophic. They're all in alignment. So my energy is flowing that way. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the beauty about that is that I'm able to go back to school and do some actually like doing stuff. If I went back to, if I went to school earlier, got my mechanical engineering degree, would I like doing that now? No. And you can see our total shift. A lot of people they're doing now is they're older adults like me and those out there around are going back to school and getting their degree because like, well, I like, I want to do this specifically. And if I do this specifically, I will be happy. And in turn, I'll be earning more money for my family, for my kids, whatever it may be. But it's a pursuit, something that feels better now because now they know what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, congratulations, something to celebrate. Pop the champagne. I will. Actually, I <laughs> I champagne. Did. No, hold on, hold on. We, I got to tell you this one. <laughs> so 
Um, it's been a while. Um, so uh, you guys know out there, I'm still technically married. Now, for, for 14 years. Okay, I, I put quotations behind that quote, technically, by law. So um, just in here in the last six weeks, I was able to find, it's called a skip tracer. So what that is, pretty much you hire, it's not, a, it's not a, nowadays an old, old adage of hiring a private investigator, they're going around in an old Cadillac with the binoculars, taking pictures with the camera and all that. Okay, those days are almost gone. We want to find somebody nowadays, okay? <laughs> I mean, with technology now, if you have a smartphone, you have a bank account, you have a credit card, you, if you've been to jail or if someone has filed, let's say, simple as um, you owe someone money and if I judgment against you, you will be found. So in this case, I was able to find my soon-to-be ex-wife, so happy, cha-ching, bada-bing. <laughs> and because, you know, the funny thing about that is that she didn't want to sign the papers. She just didn't want to sign it. She was giving excuses, taking her time. I even threatened her and said, look, you know, you're going to get served. So what happened is I had to, you know, what attorneys, first of all, let me tell you this. You hire an attorney, you didn't know specifically your outcome. And you'd educate yourself. Don't hire an attorney because you think they're going to tell you what to do. Yeah, they will, but they'll penny, they'll nickel dime you. Like I told you before on a podcast, send an email to an attorney. Next thing you know, it's 60 bucks for an email. Ask one question. But anyway, mm -hmm. sometimes you do need attorneys because they know the law and they can help you more. But do your own research. So in this case, I hired a skip tracer. I found her. I paid for that skip tracer. And then I told my attorney this is where she is. She actually got served. First day, she tried to not be served. Second day, she got served. And and what I hate about California, so when you serve somebody in a, in a divorce, you have to wait 30 days. They have 30 days to respond. Can you believe that? 30 days to respond to things you're trying to get done. It should be just 14 days maximum, 14 business days. But anyways, that's California. So she got served. And um, and obviously, once you get served, the, it starts that day. So if you get served, let's say in my case, it was the 24th, which is a Saturday, it starts that day. It, it doesn't start Monday, Okay. So I was able now to finally file, she never filed, which is awesome. I was able to now to file my judgment. Sign yesterday, it was called uh, for default. So if you don't mm -hmm. respond within 30 days, you can go to court right away and file for default. I mean, basically the person has default to respond. After they do that, at that file paperwork, I wait for the clerk or the judge. You know, nowadays judges are so busy, it's usually some clerk stamping the paperwork. And now once it's stamped paperwork, then I can then file for dissolution. So... I'm 75 to 80% done with the situation almost a year <laughs> later. Okay. So that's why I'm going to pop the champagne because those out there are going through divorce or trying to figure things out. And hold on this. I, I forgot to give you guys more context. I haven't seen her since 2007. We have no kids together. We have a bank account together. We have investments together. We own a home together. We have zero together. I have no idea what she looks like. I have no idea what she's doing in her life. I have no idea what's going on, but you see how people, pull you this this is being prolonged here because she doesn't want to sign documentation she keeps dragging out for reasons that unbeknownst to me because i don't understand her situation what's going on the only thing she ever told my attorney was that she's upset with me because her kids birth certificate we had a cell phone together which was singular so those doesn't remember singular this is time of early 2000s that went uh, default so think about it we had a singular phone back in 2008 it's now 2021 after seven years, anything you didn't pay or default goes off your credit. So it's been over 10 years. So why worry about something that's off your credit now? And if you were concerned about that, you should have, we went to court. So with that being said, I feel sorry for those that have complicated relationships or divorces because mine's not and it's still complicated. <laughs> Because you're dealing with people. That's, that's the main thing. You're dealing with people. And sometimes we deal with people that are not reasonable. It becomes very complicated overnight, almost easy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I actually want to celebrate is I have filed for default and 75 to 80% done with this mess so I can move the hell on with my life. So pop there. Mm -hmm. Pop, pop goes a weasel. It's old school way to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pop goes a weasel. Oh my I remember God. that. <laughs> pop goes a weasel. <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> that, that yes. just, you know what? The guys out there, that came out the blue. I just it came to mind right now. I have to say it. <laughs> just dying over here now. <laughs> anyway, um, Cool. Well, yeah, another congratulations to you. So it, it's just so funny. I'm thinking, man, I, it's been so long since we've done 
our last、um, freestyle, but you notice how time flies? It just goes by so fast. We're already like halfway through the year. Thank you, Facebook, for reminding me of all those memories every day, right? Remember this? Remember that? I was, it's funny, you look at your memories on Facebook or you know, those that have iPhone, they pop up. Oh, remember this time last year you're doing this?、Phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you got all these like, wow, I forgot about that picture. I forgot I did this. Yeah, I had one that popped up for me. It was,、um, I think it was,、um, must have been seven years ago. I'm like seven years. Oh my God. I looked like a baby <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm like, who is this lady? But it's just so crazy. I like, I like seeing those memories. And、um, it's, you know, it's a reminder how time really, really flies. And I was,、um, I did, a, I think it was last weekend. I was just like, it was just chill for me. And I was just reflecting, just reflecting in life, you know, just going back and, and just, Thinking about those memories, you know, like how time flew by so quick. What happened to the last five years, seven years, one year, you know, like what was I doing then? And I was just re- reflecting in life and all the, the changes that I've gone through. And it's just,、um, I would say now, like, damn, I've been in one heck of a journey in my life, you know,、mm. but、um, it's, yeah, it just super crazy. Crazy in a good way. And I can finally, I can actually now say that, you know, we talk about our, our experiences, mistakes, and all that, how we look at those sometimes like you want to go back and you have regrets, you know. But I don't, I've realized that, man, it's true. What we've learned is that your mistakes are just your, are your experiences, not mistakes, but, you know, your bad experiences. You take that and you think back, had you not gotten or had you not fallen, You wouldn't be where you are now because of those things that, those are the things that made you who you are now,、mm-hmm. kind of thing.、Uh, you know you know what I mean by,、um, by experiences, bad experiences in your life, I would say. And I look at it now, man. At that time, I was looking at that like I was just going into whether I was going down, I was feeling bad, or, you know,、um, I've made mistakes or I've had regrets. Back then, I look at those like that. Like, I, I can't pick myself back up on certain things. But now, when I look at that, I was able to get myself up. I was able to get through it, through any obstacles or challenges. But those experiences now I look at is what made me stronger, what made me a stronger woman I am today.、Mm. Mm. You know,、um, I've got to add another thing too. I've also got to hire Lyra. A wellness healthcare provider as a contract coach. Oh, yeah. And we went this whole thing about you know, every company, Better Up, Lyra, ourselves, we all have different models we use with our clients. And they have a model, the model, different models they're using. And I did a practice session、uh, this past Thursday with one of the coaches because before you get live to take on clients,、um, you have to do a practice se- session, make sure you understand the software, the, the With the software, how it works, make sure you kind of you know in line with some of their values, which is cool too. And one thing we touched on this reminded me about that is that,、um, you know, failure is just only really just feedback. So we always want to say, I failed, I failed, I made a mistake. Well, either one, failure, I made a mistake, it's just feedback. If, if you know, you say you made a mistake because you have more information. So have you heard the idea that? If I, if I can go back 10 years, I would do X, Y, Z, right? We always want to change something.、Mm-hmm. But then it can change your trajectory. I may not be here. You may not be here. You may not be at this point in your life. So it's only the fact that now we're aware of more information. We can go back, oh, I wish I made, made better decisions. But we never say to ourselves, what, what, failure is only learning. Failure, is, failure doesn't really exist. If you're doing something the first time, you've never done before, never ever done before, you know, it's like starting a job. The first 90 days, you're just trying to get acclimated. When you start a new sport, you just try and learn the fundamentals. When you read a book, you're just trying to get to the first couple pages. So you're not failing. You know, when I always hear about entrepreneurs, we,、oh, I read 52 books a year. I do this. You know, hear about Bill Gates, let's say as an example, how many books he reads a year. First of all, he may read a thousand books a year. And if I can only read 30 books a year, I may retain more information he does than reading a thousand books. 30 books for me gives me exactly the cadence I need. I don't need to compare myself to him. So, how the idea that we're, well,、oh, I should be reading more books, just because we read more books does not mean you're actually absorbing the knowledge. We can't. 
Human beings cannot continue to remember and everything they have. Have you heard of deja vu? Have you ever heard of, oh, yeah, I forgot about that? You know, we can't remember or recall things that randomly all the time because as right now, you listen to this podcast, let's say myself, I'm looking at, okay, make sure my volume's on, make sure your internet's working, make sure I'm close enough to my mic, all these things going on. I can't remember every single thing because I got so many things <laughs> going on in front of me right now at this moment. So the point is, is that failure is just feedback. Mistakes are only apt to have more context. We don't make mistakes. Human beings don't make mistakes because if you think about it, if you go back 10 years, you have more knowledge than you did 10 years ago. So how did you make a mistake? You just gained more knowledge over time. Hey, and you know what? Nobody's perfect. <clears throat> you know what? I would not, I would not, I cannot define what perfect is at this point in Nobody's my life. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Life is not perfect. We all have flaws. We all have something. But those flaws are not like ugly flaws. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. no, they're not. So it's, it's, that's just, yeah. Well, no, let's nobody. look at this this way, right? Flaws being not perfect doesn't really exist. It, it doesn't. It only exists because we're comparing ourselves to something or somebody else, which we or deem to, to be, or to <clears throat> others, that yeah. we deem to be the perfect way of doing something. And that's what perfection comes to. Well, that person's good at writing, or that person's good at math, or that person's good at finance, or that person's really rich. Well, we're just comparing ourselves to someone else because we think that gives us, because perfection, perfection equals a level of happiness. So when we achieve a level of perfection, it means we hopefully will be more happier. But we don't realize happiness is um, um, hedonic, he sorry, not hedonic, um, hedonic, H-E-D-O-N-C-I-C. -E and there's also a thing called um, eudaimonic, eudaimonic happiness. So each one's are different levels of happiness. And that's why perfection, you know, we think this needs to be perfect and it only exists because we think that we bring with a level of happiness and it doesn't. And whatever happiness is to you, you know, that's you, you live the life that you want and just be happy. Just, just be yourself. Like for me, I, you know, just let people see the real and perfect, flawed, maybe weird, beautiful you, or the person that you are, you know? And you will attract more. You will just, we need more people like that in this world. That uh, I gotta do. say. We do. And um, <clears throat> I was thinking about like following energy. So speaking of energy, following energy, how you're going back to school because it's all in alignment of what you really want and what you really like to do. I am in the process of almost finishing um, and becoming a Reiki practitioner. Which, awesome. Yeah. So this is another thing that really opened up for me more and how it's, I could really even feel the difference in me and the changes in me, like deep down inside me. So <clears throat> a lot of the work and training or all these courses that I've taken, I realized, man, I've really just been following the energy, you know, and sometimes you feel that calling. Once I started, it's like, it just keeps coming to me and I take it when, when it, while, as they come. Mm -hmm. And I'm just learning a lot more and just, um, yeah, just learning a lot more about myself and just realizing that I have changed and I have been going through these changes and all those. And that's why I did that. I was reflecting, right? And all those experiences that I've had in the past were just an experience. And that experience where now they are good experience because if it wasn't for that, again, I can't stress that enough. And this goes with anybody. If it wasn't for, for any of your past experiences, good or bad, you wouldn't be the person that you are today. You wouldn't be who you are right now. Mm. Mm. You know, that's why I think everything's happening in my life. I wouldn't be who I am today if I didn't have those experiences. I, you know, um, from file bankruptcy to have bad credit, didn't go to college um, at a young age, um, you know, whatever that age is, but 
the job I had career I had. If I didn't have that job, I wouldn't be here today. You know, all these great, wonderful things that I had to deal with is that if I didn't experience them, I wouldn't be where I am today. So they're all everything in life really gives us the power we need to change our trajectory. They give us, you know, like Seneca said in one of the books I just am reading now is um, he sent it probably for a lot of years, for thousands of years, probably whatever. Luck only happens with preparation. So pretty much if you're preparing for something like me, I feel right now me going to school, me doing these different things, my luck will happen because now I prepare for that. So luck happens when it meets preparation. Mm-hmm. I like that. You never heard that one before? No, but I like it. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's, I think it says some more, I kind of monetize it, but I think it says a little more than that, but it's basically everything you're doing is preparing for something. So it's when luck means preparation and it, that's, yeah, that's it. it is like for me, um, personally, I feel that it is, I do have a strong feeling about it. And so that's why I'm just, I'm going. I'm going with the flow, going with the energy, where the energy takes me. Mm -hmm. Because I know it is preparing me for something. And I don't care how old I am. You know what I mean? I don't care if later I'm going to be 60 and whatever that thing comes up. But I have realized I am going to be this person that will keep going through a lot of these, I don't want to say changes. I'm, I'm this person that will not stop. Does that make sense? Um, I'm, there's always going to be something that I'm going to find. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep following that energy because I just, I don't see myself that once I'm done with, I think I'm doing right now and that I love to do, then I'll stop and I'm done with it because now I, I don't think I'm ever going to feel like, oh, that's it. I'm done. I've accomplished all of this already. I'm done with it. No. So that I don't see myself doing that to me. Mm. That's what I was thinking, man, I'm going to be 60 years old. I'm going to be 70 years old. There's, I'm still going to be doing something because I know, now I know myself. And this is based on how, um, when I was reflecting my life, like, you know, all these years, I've never really stopped. Mm. I've never really settled to, oh, I'm working for cor corporate. Um, you know, it's, it's stable, right? Um, why not? I've never really stopped. Even when I was in there working, I was also taking all these courses. I was taking classes. I was doing all kinds of stuff. And I just kept following it, right? So going back to when, it, even when I was a little kid, I was like, that's all makes sense now, you know, to doing all this. When I was doing karate, I was competing. I was playing volleyball, doing yoga, all this mindfulness and thinking, man, all this just really makes sense now. But I never really stopped. And that's why I've, I've, I've seen a lot of studies is those that continue to keep learning, keep growing, keep expanding, not just the physical aspect or the mental aspect, but they keep learning. And that's really, they say scientific studies off Alzheimer's, other diseases as you get older, right? Because mm -hmm. you're constantly expanding and learning and it's doing new things. Like you can take two people, two, say, seven-year-old man or man or woman, whatever it is, they can be in two completely different states in life. Mm -hmm. Same age, because one chose one path and someone chose another path. Mm -hmm. Completely different stages in life. And that's, that's why I like hanging around older people, because then I can see which ones I like <laughs> hanging around with. And then I can say, what, and I can ask questions also, what did you do with your life? So what decisions did you make? And they go, oh, yeah, we did this, 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 whatever it may have been. And I can tell right then and there, okay, if I just do the same thing they're doing, or learn from their mistakes or whatever they, they, they say don't do or whatever it is. I'm mm -hmm. just like them. So I, I already know what I, who I don't <laughs> want to be like. So I, I can tell you that right away. And I also want to tell you who I want to be like. Yeah. And they're funny. Older yeah. people are funny. I like them. Sometimes when they visit my, um, <laughs> visit my stepdad, now it's, it's funny because he has this best friend now that he hangs out with a lot. And when we visit them, we're just watching them. My mom and I would just watch them. They're like kids, you know? But now it's like, it's kind of funny watching them and at the same time funny, like talking to them and having this conversation. 
because you're watching them, you're looking at them, man, they're just living their life. They really are. They're just living their life. And you look at them, you feel like they're here. They don't know what's happening outside. They don't know what's going on in the world. Well, they do. They watch TV, right? It's all over the news. It's on TV. But at the same time, they've gotten to a point in their life where they just they just want to live and have fun. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 kind of nice. It's nice watching that, you know. I'm looking at them like that, and they're having this conversation. Sometimes the conversation is funny, and when we talk to them, and their responses to us is just funny. It just cracks us up, it, you know. It's and I'm thinking, you know, why can't we all just live our life like that? We would live in a better world. We'd have a, we'd live in a better world if everybody just lived like that. But that's something also for me. How do I want my world to be? So how do I want my world to be is how I want to live. Mm. So I got to look at that too, right? And um, you have a choice to choose the world that you want to live in. Exactly. Everything that you do is a choice. It is. It really is. It's a choice. So you can't, you can't sometimes, you know, if it doesn't happen for you or it's not happening how, how you want it, you can't really blame other people. You can't blame and you can't look for, because some, some people, they tend to find someone to blame or they find something to blame, but you really cannot because you, you made the choice. You made a choice. And, and that's, that's the biggest thing people don't realize is that you're not the cause of, so you can be two choices of life, a choice, another choice again, you can be the cause or the effect of life is all up to you, all up to you. And on that note, I would say it's been a pleasure again getting back on the podcast. It's been a while. I missed it. I had to get in sync the first couple minutes. I was like, okay, I got to get in sync. Then things start opening up like a flower. The helotrophic effect. I love to learn these new words from all the stuff I'm learning. I think sometimes I learn too much information. <laughs> but I want to say thank you again for listening to another episode of Life's of Shuffle Freestyle. And if you ever want to be a guest or you want to listen to more of our podcasts, go to Lysa Shuffle Facebook group page and all podcasts listen there. Or you can download Apple Podcasts on your smartphone or you can go to Android and get it there because those are where all the podcasts are. You can listen to it, get some ideas, get some feedback or be a guest. Send us an email at lifesashuffle at gmail.com and be a guest and share your story. And again, this is Ronald Johnson, and thanks for listening. Yes, or also follow us. I don't know. I I don't know if I missed it. If you mentioned Facebook, you can also follow our um, join our Facebook group, um, Life's a Shuffle on Facebook. And also, every month we have a workshop. Come and join us. It's a free workshop. And um, if you follow us on on Facebook and our social media, we will be posting those workshops that we do monthly. And um, we invite you to join us. And again, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.